can't get a hold of me. They can't get a hold of me. They can't get control of me. They can't get control of me. They can't get a hold. Of me. How's everybody doing? It's your boy JT Runner, man. We're back at the Favor Headquarters, 1118 Broadway. I'm here with the winner of the second Who Has the Favor contest. Uh, very talented man, my man, Costa. How you doing today, man? Yeah, how you doing, bro? Good, man. Congratulations on your recent win. Uh, there were some big names in the house, obviously, that night. Trev Rich was there. Right, what, what, yeah. How did it feel to uh, kind of take that, that win in that kind of uh, atmosphere? It was cool, bro. It was like, honestly, like, going in, bro, I just wanted to wake everybody up. Yeah. Like, I this just, was kind of your wake-up show. Yeah. Kind of make just, everybody kind of recognize who Costa was. Yeah, definitely. Do you I feel just like wanted you to accomplish that kind of? Hell yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to wake everybody up from everybody who came to support me, everybody who was there to support everybody else. Yeah, exactly. And then Trev Rich, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying. Shout out Trev Rich. Shout out Favor for throwing the show, obviously. Sure. Now, you're originally from Mount Bello, right? Yes, sir. Born and raised, grew up over there? Yeah. What was it like uh, kind of growing up on that side of town? Because I lived in Green Valley Ranch for a little bit, so I kind of know what it's like over there in Mount Bello, but uh, why don't you tell us what your experience was like out there? Uh... I mean, it's it's different, but it's the same. It's like, cause I know you spent a lot of time out here with us in the north side, right. so like it's probably a little bit. Yeah, I, the first time, like I had never been anywhere else. Like I like, cause for high school, my parents sent me to CEC, which is oh, like okay, more right over the right down the street. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's like the first time I got introduced to like another part of like, I don't know, the city. I guess yeah, you would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh. So yeah, it was real different for like the first time that I went over there. It was real different, but it, like, it's cool. Got mm -hmm. used to it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I listened to your siren song. And you say you guys grew up right across the street from Montbello High School. The high school, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's probably a little bit different going to CEC as opposed to probably most of the people you grew up with started going to Montbello yeah. High School and things like that. Uh, why did she decide to send you to a school way over here, if you don't mind me asking? Just because. At the time, the Mont Bella was not gang a very related, good, yeah, yeah very it was gang, a good school. Yeah. So Mexicans and black people will be fighting all the damn time out there. I went to, I lived in Green Valley, and so <clears throat> when I lived in Green Valley, a bunch of people would go to MLK, and there would always be Mexicans and black people fighting at MLK, and then all those people went to Mont Bella, and it was right. basically the same exact thing. Yeah, fair. So being out there in Mont Bella, growing up like that, when did you kind of get inspired and start deciding that you wanted to do music or come into music? Because I know you... You, you've been dabbling in it for a little while. Uh, it's kind of weird, bro, because, like, I w started off not, like, not even wanting to be in, like, rap shit. Like, mm -hmm. I I started off, at first, I wanted to be a football player. And that's, oh, like, okay. that's like, what so up? kind of started as that kid dream, right? Yeah. That's what everybody starts as, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, that makes and sense. And then I ended up wanting to be, like, a rock star. Like, I was, like, heavy into, like, rock music. Okay. And then... Eventually, I just started getting more into hip hop, and then in middle school, we would like freestyle on the bus and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. just fucking around. But like, I never took it serious until like I got to high school, like freshman year. That's when I was like, that Yo. was like the breaking point for you. Yeah, that's when I was like, I'm gonna do this. And it's kind of cool now, cause in at least in 2019, it seems like rock music, even hard rock music and rap music, have kind of become like even right. close to the same kind of yeah, thing. But now, that's surprising for me to hear to hear you say that, because when I listen to your music, I don't get that kind of vibe from you. Mm -hmm. So when, when you're making your music, you're not channeling that same kind of rock energy. You're more of on a, on a hip hop -y kind of style. Right. Where do you get that from? It's just studying the game, bro. Like, yeah. I'm a big fan of like all, ki all kinds of types of music. Uh -huh. I grew up, like my parents were listening to everything. You know, so like, like that, yeah. everything, oh, like okay. all kinds of music. So like, I've never been one to just like kind of try and make one type of sound just because I grew up listening to all types of sounds, you oh. know what I'm saying? So I'm just influenced by a lot of shit. But like, when I do hop in like pockets, oh. I like, you know, take what I've learned from that. From know? different type of people who are kind of doing the same right. thing. Who are some of your bigger inspirations in uh, rap music? Uh. I'd say Eminem for sure. Okay. I'd say Most Def. Okay. I'd say Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar, yeah. Uh, Dizzy Wright. Okay. Joey Badass. All right, all right. People like that. So you're kind of on like that, I want to say like that East Coast kind of way, but kind of like on that more hip-hop-y, rap type of yeah. type of music. 
Now, when I listen to your music, though, because like I said before we started the interview, I was listening to your stuff on the way over here. And like I said, I listened to probably about the first five songs. Every single song was different. Right. First song kind of sounds like you might be listening to that Joey Deadass kind of kind of Kendrick Lamar kind of rap. Cyrus was the song I was talking about. Right. Next song doesn't sound like that at all. How do you stay original by doing these different things? And like when you go in there, you, you don't try to have a certain style or you just come out with whatever you're feeling? Yeah, it's just... It just depends on how I'm feeling at the time. Like, I literally make all different kinds of type. I'd be writing like country songs. And really? Shit. Okay. Yeah, okay. Like, so that's a lesson to all you rappers out there. Maybe step <laughs> outside your box and start making some country music. Yeah, I'd be making all types of music, bro. Like, even though like I don't drop like a lot of crazy stuff like that, uh-huh. eventually I will. Yeah. Once I get more comfortable with it. But you're kind of messing with but, it right now. Yeah, most definitely. And that's so crazy because you don't definitely don't. I mean, obviously. I remember back in the day, Nelly dropped a, a oh, yeah. country song. Snoop Dogg, I think, dropped a country song right. too. But you don't really hear too many people trying to branch out like that. Do you think that kind of separates you from other artists because you try to be so versatile? Uh, most definitely, yeah. I I say that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of like, yeah, it kind of what sets me apart. But at the same time, it's not like I don't see it as anything like crazy special or anything. Uh-huh. It's just like. I just do what I what I know. You know and it's to you, it's just something easy. But I it's, feel like today in today's rap, a lot of people just put out the same kind of stuff, or right. they get comfortable with the type of music that they know how to make. Right. So they kind of just stick to that same thing. So it's kind of cool to see somebody who kind of, I'll do this. I'll write a country song if I have to. I'll write this kind of song. I, I, and I kind of, I kind of want to go for that like approach where it's like you never know what you're gonna get from me next. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You don't want. I don't want to be like predictable. You know what I'm saying? You never want to be too predictable. Yeah. So let's talk about the who has the favorite show again. Like I said, congratulations. Let's talk about your game plan going into that show because it's a competition. At, you know, at the end of the day, right. how did you plan on, you know, overcoming the other the other contestants? I was just on people's asses, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was there. Actually. I got to check out the show, so I got to I got to see it firsthand. But but yeah, you I was, was just on people's ass elaborate on everybody's ass. Like, yo, I need everybody to come to my show. So you had your people there. Yeah, I had everybody there like that I could possibly get there uh-huh. you know what I'm saying and it's and, and it gets broken up into two sets you have a first set and a second set did you try to bring more energy on one set than the other one or did you kind of plan that out a little bit I or mean ride? when I when I was figuring out like what songs to put on each set uh-huh. I knew the second set was gonna hit harder just because those are more like that's your last impression yeah right? that's the one you want to leave to them so I, I was kind of Giving more energy on the second set, mm-hmm. but you don't want to let down your first yeah. set either. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, were you planning on winning the show when you came in, or were you planning on getting the type of reactions that you were getting from the crowd and from the people that were there, or was that kind of something new to you? Uh, honestly, I didn't think I was gonna win at first. Yeah. Yeah, like I knew I was bringing a lot of people, uh-huh. but I thought, like. Either Shy Rico or Misfits was gonna bring a couple more people than I, I was. I don't know if but. I saw the Misfits, but I did see Shy Rico. He did. Have, he did have a good set. I watched yeah. him too, and he was one of the people that I thought was gonna be a contender yeah, as well. Sure. So, were you surprised at the end when you won? Yeah, I was surprised. How did it feel getting your name called? It was cool. Yeah. I mean, like, like after my second set, I was kind of like thinking, like, yo. I'm gonna win this, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? That's like, when you brought the heat. Too, right? And there was there was a lot of people there that I didn't realize. Like, yo, I actually got a lot of fucking people here. That's, you know what I'm saying? And that whole building was like packed the fuck out. It was yeah. like from I never I didn't expect there to be that many people there. So, like you said, you were trying to bring it for everybody, the new fans, the old fans. There was people there that were supporting supporting everybody right. that are probably walking out Costa fans at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Right. How does that feel? What kind of what kind of is that what you were going yeah, for? Yeah, that's. That's always a good thing, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Just trying to expand. Expand your reach. With every show, I try and do that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That should be the mission for every show. Do we have some shows coming up in 2019 planned out? Uh, I don't think I got any lined up right now. I don't think the crew has any lined up right we'll now. But for sure. We're, yeah, yeah, of course. Summer is always when we get, like, show every weekend. Shit. Gone, <laughs> we finally get into summer, so y'all yeah. can expect that. Sure. So let's talk about, I know it's a little bit old because it came out in 2017, but let's talk about Spectrum because that was your first solo project, right? Yeah. So you finally be able to, you got, you got your project out. What was the idea behind that project? It's, I, it's called Spectrum, and I, like I said, it's a very versatile album. 
were you trying to like show that you could go across the board kind of thing yeah that's uh, that's definitely what i wanted to do I, it's really like the project is really choppy you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's like different sound after different sound after different sound exactly and i did that on purpose because it's like the electromagnetic spectrum like the lights it's different colors uh -huh. so i just want to do different sounds oh, different colors different yeah. fields yeah okay and you also dropped Violet, which was like, it's a color, you know right. what I mean? It's part of the spectrum too, which is just a couple of tracks that didn't make it onto the... Yeah, at first I started, so I, I dropped that Violet thing as just like the rejects of oh, spectrum. Okay. So, and then I started going with the idea, since I'm going with this whole color scheme, this whole like... Keep it color, yeah. Yeah, so this next project, I'm going with the next color in the spectrum. And that's how you went to Indigo. Yeah. How did you decide which songs were going to be on it? on the actual project and which songs were gonna just be on violin? It was just, I was just making songs and at the end when I was like, all right, I got a shitload of songs with yeah. a shitload of different sounds. Bodies, yeah. I just picked the best ones to throw on the tape and the ones that I was like, eh, I just Didn't make scoot them over. Those ones were <laughs> together. Well, both projects is fine, I like both of them. Like I said, I was listening to them on the way over here. And now we know that Indigo is going to be the next one coming out. Yes, sir. That's coming out in 2019. Yeah. We expect it this year. What can we expect from the project? It's the a next color in the spectrum. Right. So since so this is the blue color of the spectrum, I wanted to go like a darker blue. So like it's got like a darker theme to it. Okay. The whole project is like the theme is like the fall before the climb. Okay. So it's just like it's kind of dark. The whole thing is just kind of dark. You kind of like, is it dark as like emotional or kind of dark as in like? It's like, like just heavier sense. beats okay, yeah. and just like, there's like some turn up shit on there yeah. and then there's like some emotional shit on there. Okay. And like, yeah. So we still going through the spectrum. Yeah. And do we have like an estimated kind of date or time that we can expect to see it? I'm thinking in the next couple months, okay. like maybe like next two months. Okay. Do you have any uh, features or anybody like that on the, on the project? I got my brother, Mac. Okay. Shout out Mac. Yeah. From BYZ. Okay. So. That's going to be the only one. So far, that's the only one. On oh, okay. There. Okay. Yeah. Do we have any, cause I know, you know, we linked up with favor and everything like that. You're probably planning on dropping some merch with the project. For sure. Have that in store. Yep. So make sure y'all come down here when the shit drops. Yes, get you know your what? shit coming out over Shout here. Shout out Favor. At Favor, get your It's going to be hanging up right over here. Shout out Vision 2. You know what's going on. Well, it's the gang. Costa, I want to say thank you for coming down today, man. I want to say thank you for coming down to the shop. 1118 Broadway, y'all make sure you come get your gear. Check out that Indigo coming out soon. In the meantime, check out Spectrum right now on SoundCloud. Costa, yes, Thanks, Appreciate bro. you, bro. They can get a hold of me. They can't get a hold of me They can't get control of me They can't get control of me